In this video, I will show you how to use definite integrals to represent the area between two curves. Long ago, we learned that the integral of a function from a to b is the area under the curve between a and b. Well, the area between two functions is going to be the integral of the top function minus the bottom function. The enclosed region starts at an x value of 0 and ends at an x value of 1. Notice that y1 is the top function and y2 is the bottom function. So the area will be the integral from 0 to 1 of y1 minus y2, the top function minus the bottom function. Let's go ahead and substitute in the actual functions for y1 and y2. They only asked us to set up the definite integral, so this is the answer to number 4. For number 8, the integrand of the definite integral is a difference of two functions. Sketch the graph of each function and shade the region whose area is represented by the integral. To find the area between two curves, we integrate the top function minus the bottom function. So the top function must be y equals 2 minus x squared, and the bottom function must be y equals x squared. y equals x squared is a parabola whose vertex is at the origin, facing up. y equals 2 minus x squared is the same thing as y equals negative x squared plus 2. In this form, it's a little bit easier to see that we are talking about an upside down parabola that has been shifted vertically up to. So this is going to be an upside down parabola whose vertex is at 0 comma 2. Notice that if we set the two equations equal to each other, we get this. Adding x squared to both sides, we get 2x squared is equal to 2. Dividing both sides by 2, we get x squared is equal to 1. Taking the square root of both sides, we have x is equal to plus or minus 1. These values represent the x values of the intersection points of the two curves. That's why we are integrating from negative 1 to positive 1. And the shaded area is the area represented by this integral. Let's do the same thing for number 12. Notice that for this problem, we are integrating with respect to y. So when we talk about integrating from 0 to 4, this is vertical. From 0 to 4, these are y values. When we integrate with respect to y, the area between the curves will be the right curve minus the left curve. So the right curve must be x equals 2 radical y, and the left curve must be x equals y. Just to make it easier to picture what the blue graph looks like, let's solve this for y. Dividing both sides by 2, we have x over 2 is equal to the square root of y. Squaring both sides of the equation, we have x squared over 4 is equal to y. In other words, y equals 1 fourth x squared. This is a parabola whose vertex is at the origin. So maybe something like this. x equals y is the same thing as y equals x. This is just a diagonal line with a slope of 1. So the graph looks like this. This shaded area is the area represented by the integral. We can guess that because they wrote the integral from 0 to 4, that the two curves intersect at a y value of 4. But just for fun, let's prove that. Going back to the original expressions, we had 2 radical y and y. Let's set those equal to each other. So we have 2 radical y is equal to y. If we square both sides of the equation, squaring 2 gives us 4. Squaring the square root of y gives us y, and squaring y gives us y squared. 
let's subtract 4y from both sides of the equation. So we have 0 is equal to y squared minus 4y. Let's factor by pulling out a common factor of y. So then we have y times y minus 4. Using the zero product property, we have y equals 0 and y equals 4. So these are the y values of the two intersection points, which we find here and here. And that's why they integrated from 0 to 4. For the last two problems, we will find the area of the shaded region by integrating. For problem A, we will integrate with respect to x. So we are integrating from left to right. When we integrate with respect to x, we integrate the top function minus the bottom function. In this case, the top function is the linear function. So we know that y equals x minus 6 must be the top function. y equals x squared is a parabola, which is the bottom function. In order to set up the integral, we will need to know the x-coordinates of these intersection points. So let's find them by setting the two equations equal to each other and solving. So we have x squared is equal to 6 minus x. Let's add x to both sides and subtract 6 from both sides. That will give us x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. I bet this is factorable. x squared only factors as x times x. 6 can, can factor as 2 times 3. To get a positive 1 for the middle term, we will need a negative 2 and a positive 3. Using the zero product property, we get x is equal to 2 and x is equal to negative 3. So the x-coordinate of the intersection point on the left is negative 3 and the x-coordinate of the intersection point on the right is 2. So the area between the curves will be the integral from negative 3 to 2 of the top function minus the bottom function. These parentheses aren't really doing anything, so I'm going to erase them now. Now let's integrate term by term. The antiderivative of 6 is 6x. Looking at the x, I am going to increase the exponent by 1, and then I divide by the new exponent. So I'm going to put 1 half, and we still have the minus. Moving on to the x squared, increasing the power by 1, I have x to the third power, and then dividing by the new power, I have 1 third here in the front. So minus 1 third. This is a definite integral, so I need to evaluate using the limits of integration from negative 3 to 2. This means we need to find the value at 2 minus the value at negative 3. So if you have a free response question, you can leave your answer just like this. In fact, if this were the AP exam, I would really recommend that you leave your answer like this, just in case you would make a, a careless mistake. However, what if this was a multiple choice question? Uh, the answer wouldn't be written like this, so let's practice and simplify this down. Applying all of the exponents gives us this. Applying the multiplication gives us this. Distributing that negative sign on the right-hand side gives us this. 12 minus 2 plus 18 minus 9 is 19, so we have this. Writing everything with a common denominator gives us this. So the final answer would be 125 over 6. For the last problem, we will do the same thing, but this time we will integrate with respect to y. When we integrate with respect to y, we find the area between the curves by integrating the right function minus the left function. Also, we need to solve each of these equations for x so we can have functions that are in terms of y. So, for this first one, let's take the square root of both sides of the equation. 
actually, let's just write it the other way around. So let's write x squared is equal to y. Now if we take the square root of both sides of the equation, we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. This is really two separate equations. We have x is equal to the positive square root of y, and we have x is equal to the negative square root of y. This will be needed later. Meanwhile, let's switch this one around as well. So let's write 6 minus x is equal to y. Subtracting 6 from both sides, I have negative x is equal to y minus 6. Now, dividing everything by negative 1, I get x is equal to negative y plus 6. x equals positive square root of y is the right-hand side of the parabola. x equals negative square root of y is the left-hand side of the parabola. And x equals negative y plus 6 is the linear function. So let's try to set up our integral in the form the integral of the right function minus the left function. We are integrating with respect to y. That means that the limits of integration should be y values. The y value at the bottom of the shaded area is 0, and the y value at the top is 9. So, what function is on the right and what function is on the left? I'm hoping you see that we are running into some trouble here. On the left, we have the red function, which is negative the square root of y. But on the right hand side, we have two different functions depending on which y values you're looking at. Below the y value of 4, we have this green function on the right, but above y equals 4, we have the blue function on the right. So for that reason, to integrate with respect to y, we are going to have to split this area up into two separate areas, because we can only do two curves at a time. We can just do right minus left. So let's start with the bottom part of the shaded region. This goes from a y value of 0 to a y value of 4. So those will, will be the limits of integration. And we integrate the right function minus the left function. The square root of y minus negative square root of y. Now let's set up the second integral. So we're going to add this, and this time we are integrating from 4 up to 9. Those are the y values. The lower y value is 4, and the upper y value is 9. And we are again integrating the right function minus the left function. So this will be negative y plus 6 minus negative square root of y. So we have all of this. So as you can see, in this case, it's a little bit more complicated to integrate the same set of functions with respect to y. So you, you need to choose wisely. But let's keep going. Simplifying a little bit, I see that uh, here we have minus a negative, so that's going to be addition. And that's happening in both cases. So we're going to have the integral from 0 to 4 of the square root of y plus the square root of y dy plus the integral from 4 to 9 of negative y plus 6 plus the square root of y dy. These are like terms and I don't feel like rewriting the whole thing just to, to fix this but radical y plus radical y is 2 radical y. So let's just erase and replace. And in fact, 
When you have a constant like this, it is okay to take this constant and put it out in front of the integral. So I think I will do that. As we integrate, remember that the square root of y is y to the one-half power. So for my antiderivative, I'm going to take the one-half power and add one to it. So that's going to make it the three-halves power. And then I'm going to divide by my new exponent. Dividing by 3 over 2 is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And don't forget that we have this 2 still out in the front. And we are integrating from 0 to 4. So there are my limits of integration. I'll come back to this in a moment. Now let's integrate this kind of term by term. The antiderivative of negative y. So I'm going to have the y. I'm going to increase that exponent by 1 and then divide by the new exponent. And then we have the negative sign there, so there it is. And uh, the antiderivative of 6 is going to be 6y. And um, integrating the square root of y, it's going to be the same thing as what happened over here. So I'm going to have 2 thirds y to the 3 halves power. And I am integrating all of this from 4 to 9. 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. So I'm going to put my 4 thirds way over here out in the front. Now I'm going to take my y to the 3 halves power and find the value at 4 minus the value at 0. So that's going to be 4 to the 3 halves power minus 0 to the 3 halves power. So that takes care of that first term. Now for the rest of this craziness, I need to find the value at 9 minus the value at 4. So here is the value at 9 minus the value at 4. It's not all fitting on the screen. Maybe I can fit it if I go ahead and erase this part with the 0. 0 to the 3 halves power is 0, so that's gone. Okay, and for a free response question, definitely leave your answer like this. Do not risk making a mistake in your calculations unnecessarily. Just for fun, let's break this down. I mean, what if it was a multiple choice question? Never mind that we already know the answer from part A, but let's check it out anyway. 4 to the 3 halves power. I need you to know that when you have a fractional exponent, it is in the form power over root. So this is the third power and the square root. So this is the same thing as the square root of 4 and then to the third power. The square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 to the third power is 8. So that's the value of 4 to the 3 halves power. Similarly, the square root of 9 is 3. 3 to the third power is 27. So this will be a 27 right here. Applying the rest of the exponents, we have this. Doing all of the multiplication gives us this. Getting rid of the brackets and distributing the negative sign gives us this. 54 plus 18 plus 8 minus 24 is 56. Also, combining 32 thirds minus 16 thirds is 16 thirds. Writing everything with a common denominator gives us this. So the final answer is 125 over 6, just like we got in part A.